Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Rogers! Give me a hell yeah! What's up, buddy? What's up? Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. We can see you. You look fantastic. Uh, for those that may not, and how how they may not, I would just be on me. You're in a band called Secrets, and they're absolutely fantastic. But for those that may not know who you are, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and plug or promote anything you'd like. Oh, uh, I'm Richard from the band Secrets, post-hardcore kind of mix of things. Uh, I'm in Nashville. Nashville, hell yeah. yeah. Are you? Are yeah, is that where yeah. you normally live, or are you just happen to be there right now for for like studio work or something? No, no, I live here. Yeah, I've lived here for like, like three years now. Where were you at previously? So I was in Pennsylvania for a year. I've kind of moved around a lot. But I mean, originally I'm from San Diego, and then over the last few years, uh, I've just kind of moved with my girlfriend because she's had all these promotions and different opportunities. She's a she's a sound engineer, so oh, very cool. I can I I can pretty much live anywhere because you know the only thing I have to do is go shoot music videos or tour and all that stuff. The good life, as yeah. we call it, the good life. <laughs> what's yeah. it, What's yeah. it like working with the uh, with Velocity Records right now? We know that the album's coming it's out good. in, in so, June. The album's coming out in June. We're excited about it. Yeah, June 10th is when the record comes out. Um, and then we have a bunch of singles coming out. It's good working with them. We uh, Because they were the original label that we signed to. But at the time, they were an imprint of, of Rise Records. Yeah. Oh, I didn't so know that. So now being back with them, it's it's a lot of the same... The same it, it's better now being with them because we've already like grown and established ourselves like i signed when i was 21 and i'm 33 now so it's you know we're we're a little more grown up and we know a little bit we're a little more seasoned so you're so you know we had a different guest on recently and he was like you got to have all your publishing stuff done so i'm sure you've got all you know more about like contracts now that you're a seasoned vet in the game on what to look for and stuff like that yeah yeah the first time uh we had we were just we sat on the phone with the lawyer for like like two hours and he's going through just crazy contracts and uh i didn't understand any of it but now now i do so the publishing stuff yeah we all of that's taken care of it's through bmg actually i is actually out here in nashville okay cool i have actually been a fan yeah. all the way back since the don defeo days uh which i mentioned to you on instagram but now which when you moved over from there to secrets and now looking back as the only original member uh, is it weird, like filling in different band members when when people leave for whatever reason? Is it and how does how do you go about a search of oh my bassist walked away I need to go? Is it a label thing that's recommended or do you having toured so much just know a lot of people and are like you be the perfect guy? Yeah, so each time it happened, it was um, it was all it was always one person at a time, so it wasn't like the entire band left all at once. Like people just fell off gradually. And now we've had the same four people in the band for the longest we've ever had all original members. And Wade, Wade and I, the other vocalists, being the two that have we've done three records together now. So that's he's the only uh, like other vocalist that has stuck around for more than one, one record. Everybody else failed out. So it had nothing to do with the label there throughout all that time. And there hasn't been a shortage of people that wanted to be in a band that's already kind of established. So it was always next friend in line that's been looking for an opportunity. And uh, a lot of them can't handle touring, dude. <laughs> it's, touring touring's it's a hard. grind. It's fun, but it's it's a grind. You got to be able to to stink and, you know, eat a lot of fast food, hopefully healthy fast food and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, man. It's not easy. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about the collapse, the, the title track. What, what does this track in particular mean to you? Uh, so this song's just about addiction in general. Um, so that that's what it means to me. I just something to get off my chest. It's something I feel like I've coped with for forever, just from, I think, social anxieties from being on the road. So I, I would always be like, all right, 
let's get a little bit tipsy before we can be in front of people. And then that gradually would turn into benders and things like that. But I feel like I've got it under control now. But yeah, it's about those times where it got out of hand. And I have a lot of friends that have uh, had like crazy heroin addictions or pill addictions like opiates, stuff like that. And a lot of my friends have died because of that. So I plucked from, you know, that inspiration as well as the bit that I've had from from alcohol. Yeah. Well, we're... So anybody who's going through addiction will probably understand that song right away. Congratulations to you for for pulling through and being uh, the healthiest you've been in a long time, for sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and jam. Uh... Well, well, <laughs> what do you mean? Well, okay. I just got home and I'm still like shaking off the dust from like that 30 day tour. I slept for I was in bed for, I think, like two days when I first got home. Best. It it's the best sleep you've ever had. Probably, I would imagine. This is the collapse. Oh, amazing. Uh, who did you jam? You said you were signed at 21. So let's let's rewind to like high school days. You're driving around in your car, and who are you blasting at maximum volume to help get that high uh, vocal level? Uh, a lot of well, probably like Sayosin and um, lots of Anthony Green, obviously. Shout out to Anthony. There's a band. People people kept pushing the limits with it. Do you remember a band called Of Machines? Yeah, of course. Half like one or two of them went on to be in issues, right? I don't know about that, but uh, I really don't know about that. But yeah, that was a band. They came out like after Seosin and everything. I don't think that I think they may have put one record out, but that dude was singing high. It uh, and it also just kind of came naturally to me. Like that's it just feels comfortable. This chorus is probably the highest i've ever gone though on parasite we actually tune it a half step we tune it a half step down no on the collapse okay um yeah, when we play it live we tune it. i can sing it but it just sounds cooler a half step down one really quick don defeo question from back in the day when when you stepped away from that project and wanted to start secrets did you specifically want to go extremely heavier i know it's very similar in the same fact that it has like the screaming and singing balance but uh, it's it's noticeably heavier. It, I know it's also many, many years since you've probably been asked a question like this, but can you talk about that transition of basically forming uh, secrets? That... Yeah, yeah, I got an answer. By the way, I, my camera's up here, so I'm looking right at you, by the way. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so that transition was was very um, kind of cultivated. Like that band was was created in a sense. So I didn't really have an idea what was going to happen. I just knew that there were more opportunities with it. So it was really hard for me to leave Don DeFeo for Secrets. Uh, but yeah, so we went in and worked with Tom Denny, and that was kind of what was coming out of him. Because he that first record, he did, he did all of the guitar work on it. Like I was there at the side saying, oh, this sounds cool, this sounds cool. But I mean, I was always a fan of that style of music, but it was kind of like, yeah, it wasn't that first record wasn't everything that I would have chosen for it to be. But then eventually we got to, you know, move around and had some wiggle room. And I had a little more say in what we were doing because I was the only vocalist that like stayed in the band from that. So that's, that's how that started. But yeah, Don DeFeo was dope, dude. I still I play video games with the guys of that band. Hell yeah. Uh, every day. Yeah, they just texted me a little bit ago. Which so we still talk all the time. What's your what's your game that you're you're uh, like playing a lot right now? So with them playing Fortnite or Apex, or uh, we'll move around to random stuff, whatever whatever we feel like playing. If we want to get real sweaty, we'll mostly like battle uh, royale, we'll mostly battle royale style stuff. Pretty much battle royale is what we're all playing together. Um, but right now I'm playing a game called Hollow Knight. I don't know if you've heard of that. I've not heard that. It's like a it's a side scroller. That's really good. What else am I playing? Oh, I got um what is it? It just came out. Horizon, Forbidden West. That's okay. coming in right now. And then Pokemon. The new one. Are the Brooklyn <laughs> Nets gonna win it all this year? Uh well, I don't know. Kyrie did just uh play his first home game finally. 
it's, it's after only playing like, like 19 games for the whole season that would, was, that was going to be weird maybe. too if they somehow had home court advantage but only was in the finals was only gonna be able to play the way games that was gonna be weird I'm, I'm a laker fan so i'm just hoping that ad comes in right on time oh, and we man. win the play in blah, blah, blah. i see your hat by the way but uh all right let's jam let's jam parasite yeah. before we do though um who was the who was the producer that uh that did that you worked with to do do the whole uh the new record this record we went back with tom denny back with tom again okay cool yeah parasite yeah. hanging out with richard rogers of secrets so short but it's so sweet at the same time it just smacks you right in the lip dude yeah that one we've always wanted to do like a, a minute 30 song you remember because I, I always listen to those and i'm just like i'll play it back and play it back those just straight up in your face, a minute and thirty of nonstop. Those sometimes those are the best. Sometimes those are the best for sure. Dude, they are the best. The short and sweet ones, I love them. Richard, for any project you've ever done, whether it was Sleep Well, Dawn, or Secrets, what is the absolute worst gig story ever? Everything went wrong at this show that you played. Everything went wrong. A worst gig story? Oh man, I haven't thought about that in so fucking long. Oh man, uh, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I have worse ones, but my birthday, it was quite a few years ago. We played So What Music Festival. Everybody was buying me shots and lots of lots of madness, and I was like barely able to stand up. So that was the worst <laughs> for me because it was like, too, it was everybody else's fault though because everybody came up and saw me, and that that whole festival is like a reunion with all of our friends playing it or all of our friends in that live in Dallas because that's where it was. Yeah. That was a nightmare. But we've got a lot more. We've got a lot of really bad ones. Is there, oh, is there ever one where like, general, we, we, go I'm ahead. So, I'm sorry. You go, you go. Okay. We spent $30,000 on this um, shuttle bus. Cause we were like, fuck the van, dude, I'm done with the van. Let's build out a bus, dude. So we spent 30 K on this thing, built it out. So 30 K plus like, 30 hours of work and uh first tour we did we got two weeks in and we broke down in des moines iowa and we were stuck there for i think a week so we missed a week of shows that's all of our guarantee all of our merch plus paid for a hotel the whole time and then it cost us nine thousand dollars to fix the fucking thing got it fixed and what we're at like 40k basically in the hole <laughs> and then finished the tour made no money because we had already freaking spent it all and then the next tour, it broke down again. Damn. And then that was it. We had to leave it. We had to leave it in Sacramento. Were you ever able to like eBay yeah. it post tour or anything? We sold it to this company in Vegas for $3,500. And then they, they turned it into a, um, a limo van, like a, like a party bus. And the guy probably made so much money off of that $3,500 investment because i'm sure they knew how to fix it they had all the spare parts like they keep those things in rotation you know yeah that that is that is so a that, rough one that was like that was a horror story in a different sense. that is a rough yeah. one um is there is there a particular artist that maybe you've you've played a show with before that you've wanted to get on a secrets track it just hasn't worked out maybe their label said no or just the timing didn't work out as far as a feature I've never really wanted features too much. I mean, there's the artists that I would love to to be on a song, but none of them are in this genre, and it just would it would be pointless. It would definitely be for me to be a fanboy, but it would be like the singer of Cartel, singer of Brand New, maybe Adam Lazaro back there. There you go, <laughs> back behind you. Some OGs right By the there. Way, but that background is just getting me yeah stoked. I feel like we were on that tour, that one. Are you also no, are you also not. a Chargers fan? Is that why I see the Chargers in the background also? So yeah, that's I'm I'm a Chargers fan and a Golden State Warriors fan. And a Brooklyn Nets talking. fan? No, no, no. I just I just like the hat. Okay, I have I was, like so many different hats. Right I was gonna say. Hey, then, yo, what uh, the sorry, fuck? I got a Sharks hat back there. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wear a bunch of different ones. But um no, yeah, the Chargers the Chargers are my team, Padres are my team. And then we don't have a basketball team, so I went up. I went up north. Although I do have, I'll always have love for the Lakers. I mean, it's it's a dynasty. That a boy. There we go. Uh, I want to play "Dance of the yeah. Dead" next, just because it's probably my favorite track uh, in the Secrets catalog. But before I do, back. 
a little throwback. Before I do, after after this, if you're down to review a couple local bands with us, it could be any genre from anywhere. Most of the time, I've never even heard these songs. And then I want to ask you some trivia. My job is to stump you. And I see you have a ton of Star Wars stuff in the background. Is it safe to say you've seen every Star Wars movie and you're pretty knowledgeable on Star Wars? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Hopefully my brain can can be quick right now. I'm going to see if I can pull up some Star Wars trivia and stump you. Dance of the Dead. All right, let's go. No. Uh, so Xander, yeah, I talk to him every once in a while. We, But like, it's been like four months since we've talked. But we're, we've always been in touch and still decently close. We'll hang out whenever I'm in California sometimes. That's cool. If the timing's right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to attempt right now to stump you. Here we go. Star Wars Uh-oh. Revenge of the Sith. You've seen this one probably a couple times as a Star Wars fan, I would imagine. Who told Anakin to kill Count Dooku? Uh, the, what was he called? I want to say that the Prime Minister, but he was, uh, like, it was before he turned into the Emperor. Right? I am not as knowledgeable about Star Wars as you. I see the answer, and it has an explanation, but it's like a long paragraph. I will give you a slight hint. It starts... I mean, technically, yes. It says the Supreme Chancellor blank. Yeah. So, it starts with a P. With a P? Yeah, Supreme Chancellor starts with a P. Oh, God. Supreme Chancellor. Primavera. I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take it. Palpatine. Palpatine. Palpatine is what we're looking for. But Primavera is just just as good. So we'll go ahead and spin the wheel and see what it lands on. So this is, um, most of this, it could be prizes. A lot of it is like punishment for people, mostly for me. But uh, let's play let's play a random local band and see what you think about it. It could be any genre. This is Night Shield. It's identical, to be real, for sure. Yeah, it's very throwback, uh, which... I'll pick a character after this. It doesn't that, really make there's sense. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Sorry? No, I was saying it, it wanted me to pick a character, which I have like a, a green screen, like auto face changer thing that runs at all times. Like, or I'll just give you an example. <laughs> like, boom, now I'm a pirate. And it was like, BG, pick a character, but I don't want to continue the interview as a character. That's just weird. <laughs> so we'll just keep it. We'll just keep it moving. You know, I actually met you once at, uh, um, I want to say it was the Roxy years ago i don't remember who you guys played with it could have been like a johnny craig show or, or it feel i feel like it was something like that but uh it was a hell of a show aaron was in we the band did, at the time we did yeah yeah so we did we did a johnny uh, it was a johnny craig solo thing kyle lucas on tour yeah we that did was it that was it on that one that was it yeah i remember telling you fuck way you're, back you're in la then I'm in. Uh, I'm like an hour and a half outside of LA. We call it the High Desert. It's basically a whole bunch of nothing on the way to Vegas. <laughs> Is that like Palm Springs or? Yeah, I'm pretty close to there. I'm in Victorville, Apple Valley. Yeah, I know Victorville very, very well. I used to live in a town called Richcrest. Oh yeah, yeah, not too far from here. Hell yeah! So yeah, familiar with the stopping grounds. Miles and... Oh, I yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've I've been through Victorville. So I played shows in Victorville, bro, like in high school. <laughs> Do you remember any of the names of the bars or anything? No, so they were always like weird makeshift things. Like we played some random club that was a venue for a minute. Um Damn, dude. Dude, I recorded uh my first uh EP out there when I was in high school with a guy named Chris Como. He lives in uh Orange County now. But yeah, he had a studio name. out there. I know that name for some reason, Chris Como. Anyway, let's do let's yeah. do one more. Um, this is a uh, Cuz Rain with Given Up with Lincoln Park cover. Yeah, my, yeah. I always I always wonder if like bands, let's just call them Asian bands, like for example, if if they don't know English, but to do an English cover, they have to learn how to say like syllables correctly. <laughs> like like if you were to try and do an a, a Japanese cover. You'd surely do a little bit of research on how to say the lyrics correctly so you don't sound all weird, right? Like, does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I have 
a lot of answers to that, but that sounded like K-pop punk rock. It was kind of cool. Pretty, it was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, no, no. So we've we've toured in Japan a few times, and basically every band, like, well, they have amazing musicians over there. So, have you ever heard of Crystal Lake? Yeah, of course. Yeah, their vocalist, he's getting better at English, but like, yeah, dude, when I, we played a show with them in Manila, and uh, I went up and talked to him because he's like, he's amazing. He's like, oh, thank you, thank you. He like couldn't couldn't speak a lot of English, but all of their lyrics are in English. So what I believe what they do is they are such fans of American bands, especially in the metalcore genre, that they like will just mimic everything like that, and that probably helps them learn English in a sense. And then, uh, yeah, that's not. It's easy. always weird. I always think, man, how are you writing something? that meaningful in a whole nother language like it's it's hard i mean for there's real. no fucking way i'd be able to write a song in japanese like that that language is one of the hardest to learn it would just like translate if you've been speaking english all your life it just it's a problem to learn it yeah it would just it would just i feel like the translations just gets lost like you we put like those and ands like in the wrong places so when they they just laugh at us anyway <laughs> uh, yeah, I would, uh, so I ne- I never judge uh, foreign bands doing songs in English because I'm like that. They sound pretty fucking good. Yeah, that, that's most a, of the time. That's a cool motto to go by. Uh, is there one song in your catalog that you feel like you're most proud of, and is it "Ass Back Home"? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what What is your What do you feel like is your your best? writing material so far regarding secrets writing material mine would be a weird one because i care about different i mean dance of the dead is up there dude that is a really good song um there's this song oh no okay i think one of the most well-written songs that we have with meaning behind it would be incredible it's just structured perfectly like a pop song but we add our our own heaviness to it. Chorus is huge. It's one fucking word. Like, yeah, I don't know. In a in an actual like, like writing a traditional song sense, but adding the post hardcore flair, I believe that it just kind of gave one. you chills when when you heard it back the first time as one of those kind of records. Yeah, well, just that was one of those songs when we were writing it. I was like, this song is gonna be fucking huge. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's so good. I love that song. Yeah. Plus, I was like freshly in love and everything, and it's about being saved by love and all that. Love is love. Uh, is a mother. F- tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a super banger. Super banger for sure. Uh, dude, what what do you guys have? Uh, let's. So June tenth has come. Album's out. What is planned for the rest of twenty twenty two that we're allowed to know about? I don't even know yet. Honestly, we just got home a week ago and uh, any plans that we kind of had are getting adjusted because the tour went better than we thought. And the, the person who owns our label is uh, Dave Shapiro, massive booking agent. He was out at the L.A. show. And he, he hadn't heard us in 10 years or, or like seven years whenever we got off the label. And uh, he just came up and he was like, we we're changing a lot of things. Now that he understands what we're going for, it was it was a really good. That's awesome. Good conversation. So yeah, now I think that we're gonna have a few bigger opportunities than what we had originally planned. Uh, now that we're back in the mix of things, and yeah, so that's awesome. What, Hell yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll be posting about it though. But yeah, I we literally don't have anything planned. So right now, no work today. Basically, <laughs> relax time for now. Uh, I leave you with one final yeah. question. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, what is what would you say is the best? Being this is a local band show, what would you say is either the biggest mistake you made as a band trying to make it, or the best advice you were ever given that changed your music career? Oh, well, let's be real. That uh, that don't buy a shuttle bus and build it out for thirty thousand dollars. Don't do that. They're not meant to travel that far. Um, I don't know. Probably just be present, be there. Don't try to escape what you're going through by all the shit around you, all the booze and fucking 
stuff that doesn't matter. Focus on your instrument. Maybe go out and see whatever town you're in if you get the opportunity to actually go to places. And uh, yeah, be mindful and be present. Take and in the fucking, moment and enjoy. Whatever you're playing, whatever you're, yeah, whatever you, because it goes by fast, it goes by super fast. And whatever you're playing, if you're singing, playing bass or whatever, you just gotta be the best at that and focus on that. Which is something I feel like, like with singing, I could do it anywhere. So I always put guitar by the wayside. And then now we're playing like real hard licks. So I'm like, okay, I gotta get a little better. I gotta make up for like a year of just sitting there not playing guitar in the pandemic. It'll come back. Don't worry. <laughs> Richard. No, it, just... did, it did. We're good. We're good. We're good. But Hell it was yeah. Hard. This was an yeah, absolute pleasure. I like, Holy shit. I, yeah, I th- oh yeah. Yeah. One thing though. Uh, I got to apologize. I totally lost track of time and I've been in this weird home haze. So, so my apologies for, for coming in late, but I appreciate you having me. You're good. Our second guest was actually scheduled for 6.30, so it all worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. So, uh, New album comes out June 10th. Ladies and gentlemen, Secrets. Make sure you pick it up. It's on Velocity Records. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Rogers! Yeah, hell yeah! Stay safe on the road, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Have a good day. You too. Cheers. <laughs>